I'm so excited to be back because this is where we shot the show and I have so many memories from working on it here so to come back and share it with people from here means a lot to me. May is on a path of vengeance that is informed by her childhood, by the home planet that she comes from, by the sort of force magic she's been raised by. And uh, she's at odds with the world against her, uh, but around her, but she has a reason and you learn why. I guess what's really exciting is we get to focus on a part of the timeline that hasn't been explored before in live action, which is a huge privilege. Uh, and it's my favorite part of the timeline because uh, there's so much fascinating lore that contributes to it uh, that we get to reference and play with. Leslie is an unwavering person who loves Star Wars so deeply, who always leads with her heart. And I feel like that's really apparent in the show. She, it takes a lot of, I think, stamina and knowledge of self and, and create a vision in order to lead something like this and create it. And she always did it fearlessly and she always maintained the point, which was the question of right and wrong and what it means to be a human being. They can expect a lot of twists and turns, um, a lot of exciting action, and a lot of me crying. <laughs> I'm so excited. Also, I get to be here with my whole family and my best friends, and it's, it's yeah, it's really exciting. I actually brought one of my closest friends who was my costumer on the show to kind of celebrate what we did together. It's really cool. I can tell you that she is a young Jedi Padawan. She's very talented. She's very intelligent. She's very wise. And she's very cool. I'm screaming in sheer excitement, yeah. I was so happy. I've been a Star Wars fan forever, so getting the news is really exhilarating. I think that it's really human, so anyone can really get into it because of how human it is. I can't really say much, but they have some sick saber fights coming up that they can be excited about. I'm very excited about those. Yeah. Ah, London is a challenge. 10개월 정도 있었는데 아, 그 10개월이 벌써 다 지나가고 이렇게 아, 프리미어 시간이 오게 될 줄은 정말 시간이 굉장히 빨리 지나간 것 같은데 그동안 아, 루카스 필름과 디즈니 플러스에서 아, 작업을 너무나도 멋지게 해 놓으셔서 아, 미국에서 첫 번째 프리미어 가졌을 때 봤는데 아, 너무 멋진 아, 에피소드가 지금 나오고 있습니다. 그래서 여러분들께 빨리 보여드리고 싶습니다. Uh, we spent 10 months uh, in London uh, shooting and I can't believe that time already passed by and I'm here for the premiere now. Um, I feel like Lucasfilms and Disney did such a wonderful job um, finishing up the series so I was able to watch it um, in the LA premiere and I'm really looking forward to the audience getting to see it for the first time. <laughs> The most different part is that um, it's about uh, serial murder of Jedi's. It's a story that's never been told in another uh, show before. Master Soul is a young man who 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 is 제다이 동료들 사이에서 존경을 받는 어, 그런 인물입니다. 그런데 어, 제다이를 어, 연쇄살인하는 사건이 벌어지면서 그 사건을 추적해 나가면서 겪게 되는 어, 어, 거대한 어, 비극들이 밝혀지면서 어, 내적 갈등을 심하게 겪는 그런 캐릭터입니다. Is a character uh, that teaches younglings, and while he is incredibly physically powerful, he's also very warm-hearted and well-respected among the other Jedi. When the serial murder of Jedi happened, he must investigate what happens and experiences a lot of inner turmoil in the process of finding the truth. Uh, 많이 준비가 되어 있었고 
그래서 하나씩 하나씩 해 나갈 때마다 어, 보람을 느끼게 될 정도로 어, 아주 훌륭한 어, 프로그램이었습니다. 그래서 그 덕분에 촬영도 안전하게 잘 촬영할 수 있었고 어, 현장에서 오히려 연기에만 더 집중할 수 있었던 것도 역시 아, 훌륭한 스턴트 팀들 때문이었습니다. So we had a very um, uh, diverse and fun training program that allowed us to focus on acting while, while we were on set. It was also very safe. So because of this, I really want to uh, thank the stunt team um, to be able to pull off this type of training. Ah, 역시 과연 이 어, 포스가 강한 제다이들을 어, 죽이는 그 인물은 누구일까 그것을 어, 찾아가면서 즐겨보는 그런 이야기 구조가 어, 매우 재미있으실 겁니다. Star Wars fans will really enjoy the story structure of figuring out who this Jedi killer is. But it's, it's amazing. It's incredible to be here. Last time I was here was for another premiere, so it's very strange to be in this position for it. Really incredible, though. So I play Yord Fandar. Uh, he's a bit of a, <laughs> for lack of better words, uptight. <laughs> um, he is committed to the Jedi Council, to the Order, and to keeping peace within the galaxy. He is, he is, uh, oof, he holds himself to a high regard as well. A lot of responsibility. But if you put all those eggs in one basket, it can be dangerous. So much fun. Frustrating from that weird sensibility that I wanted to succeed in everything I stepped into. So that kind of got locked in my mind, I'm not gonna lie, but so much fun. And we had the best team. It, it makes it so much easier when you know you can trust the people centered around you. And I had not a question the entire process. So unbelievable, yeah. Oh, I mean, there's the basic that we're starting at a different time period. You know, we're coming in from the get, and you don't have to know much about the world in order to vest into it. But I think one of the most exciting parts for me is that it's a murder mystery, twisted into it. And I know it's kind of a selling point that we're using, but I was not expecting from my own watch to be that invested in that realm of it. The Star Wars, of course, is the utmost. It is the being that is you know, where, it, where it stems from. But it has this beautiful ride the whole way through that just keeps, I hope it keeps audiences as enthralled as I was. Yeah. I freaked out. I freaked out and then I freaked out from like the excitement and then freaked out from the like, oh my God, I'm playing a Jedi. I watched a lot of the movies that night. <laughs> um, I'm a Bad Batch fanatic, so I was going back and forth on the Bad Batch, but there's no Jedi in there. Actually, that's not true. There's some that show up. Um, but it was a mixture, a mixture of emotions. Overwhelmingly pride yeah. and honored. Incredibly excited. You know, we worked on this thing for eight months. We've been waiting on it for two years to come out. Um, and I can't wait for people to really just experience the uh, adventure that we've been working on for so long. My character's name is Kaimir. He is basically <laughs> a civilian in this whole galaxy. I'm um, trying to navigate these larger powers that are kind of pulling him back and forth. He, he finds himself reluctantly in the, the, the mission of May, trying to appease her master, and he's trying to help her out so that he can survive. I turned into the little boy that just played with lightsabers as a kid and just, you know, I would, just a child. I just turned into a child again, um, filled with excitement. Um, yeah, at the thought of the fact that I could work on a, on a Star Wars series. Uh, I feel like the fans have connected with this universe just because it's it's so ingrained in our culture. You know, it's it's such a part of the zeitgeist, and you see it everywhere. Even if you're not a fan, you see the you see Grogu everywhere. You see the lightsabers. You see um, just everything about Star Wars uh, around us, and um, it's such an integral part of our culture for decades. And you know, it's a legacy that will hopefully continue for for, for a long, long time. And to be a part of it is, is yes, it's extraordinary. They should watch the Acolyte because of the incredible fight work and stunt choreography, um, the incredible cinematography, uh, the practical sets, the, the ode to the vintage, uh, 
uh, original prequel trilogy, uh, the original trilogy, um, and just, it's a great story. You know, it's rooted in this murder mystery, which is uh, compelling and exciting, and anybody, not even a Star Wars fan, needs to come in to, to really understand what's happening. Like, all, everybody can come in and understand this, this fantastic world. I'm so excited. Also, we shot here, so it's really good to be back. I can't wait for people to see it, and I really can't wait for the whole series to come out so that we can talk about all of it and not be so worried about spo spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Brunester, at this point, you uh, have seen her in the books, and she was about 16 years old then, and now it's 100 years later. She's old. She's an elder Jedi master, revered, very, very powerful. And she is sort of the liaison. She's found herself in this liaison position between the Jedi and the Senate and trying to contain this problem that is happening. I loved it. I look better green. Um, I love the tattoos. I loved everything about it. And it really helped transform me uh, into this uh, yeah, powerful alien. <laughs> I loved it. We did force training and um, you know, I live with, I'm married to Leslie, so I had a lot of uh, steep learning curve of learning everything, really, while she was writing. Um, so yeah, it was, I don't know, it was fun. I was, I was saying earlier, like, I didn't really dream about being in Star Wars, and then once I was in it, I was like, why didn't I dream about this? It's incredible. Like, I'm gonna, I need to start, start thinking about my dreams and what I want to do. It's been so fun. I'm so excited to see the show again in a big theater. Um, it was really fun in the States to watch it in Los Angeles because in that in the theater, you can really hear Michael Abel's score. Um, it's something that, of course, you can hear fine on your phone or your television, but hearing it with that sound system, I was like, I have to do that again as soon as possible. So being here in London is an absolute pleasure and an opportunity to see his work again and the work of all these performers, too. Getting to see them on the big screen felt really, really special. And the performances have so much nuance in them that for uh, a, a, an audience to see that is a joy, an absolute joy. I think it's different because it's an original story that takes place in a part of the timeline that doesn't have anything to do with the Skywalker saga or the Empire or the Rebellion or the Resistance. It takes place during a time period of peace and uh, a place where we had a lot of freedom to work on the narrative in a way that I think is fun and new, but also adheres to the aesthetics and the, and the themes of Star Wars. It was really part of the pitch to have it take place when it does, um, because again, I just didn't want to step on anything that these amazing creators like Tony Gilroy, Dave Filoni, John Favreau, they're doing something really amazing and really beautiful with that part of the timeline. So I didn't want to step on what these men were doing. It was, it would have been too uh, intimidating. So it, yeah, there was a lot of freedom there. It originated with um, a conflict that I had with my sister. Um, I felt like she and I are sort of opposite ends of the spectrum about a lot of different things. So I thought it would be interesting to have two sisters, one who is light-sided and one who is dark-sided. And I thought it was interesting with my sister that we each thought that we're really right. So I thought it would be so interesting to, to, to see two sisters on opposite ends of the spectrum who both are absolutely positive that they're on the right side of the of the force and of um, and of the story so that just seemed really interesting to me like nobody and making a story about the bad guys like nobody wakes up wanting to be the bad guy that's just not how it works so i wanted to explore how the sith maybe had survived during this time where they thought to be extinct and i'm really excited for people to see it because it is this little new take on things that I think, I hope people will enjoy and come see.